welcome back to my channel. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Last upload was on the ProCharge Gen 5 Silverado. Um, hope you guys liked it, liked the, me going in depth on the DI stuff and on how to stretch out the L83 fuel system. So today's video, we're gonna be working on this Gen 3. It's a, I think it's a 99 or 2000 model Chevy Silverado with a 5.3. Um, this one's equipped with the Truck Norris camshaft. So I had an earlier video where the customer had some TPS issues. So we did the diag on it real quick and figured out that the Fitec throttle body has the TPS clocked incorrectly. So first thing we're gonna do today is we are going to swap the throttle body out for the stock drive-by cable throttle body. And then we're gonna get the tuning. So today's video, I'll have some tuning tips on the 4L60 um, and just the overall, uh, on really overall how to tune a truck Norse truck. Um, so let's get to work. So we got the truck inside the shop now. Um, went ahead on and threw the battery on the battery charger. So anytime you guys are doing electrical work or tuning or anything, if you have any questions about the battery condition or anything like that, don't hesitate to throw a battery charger on there. Um, but battery chargers on the truck, the junkyard throttle body that I went and grabbed uh, is in our parts washer. Uh, it's like a hot tank. So it's, I'm gonna try to get it to look as good as I can. He'll probably wanna pull it off and paint it, but obviously we don't have time for that. So anyways, let's get this uh, Fitec throttle body off of here and get the four bolt to three bolt adapter mounted. So this is the LS throttle body adapter four bolt intake to three bolt. And so let's open this thing up. So I want you guys to notice something and this trips up a lot of people. Um, so these manufacturers that offer these adapters, they offer two different ones. They'll offer one that is for drive by wire that does not have this machined part right here. So this machined part is actually for the idle air control valve. If you get one for a drive by wire vehicle that is smooth right here, and you put it on a drive-by cable uh, you know, engine or throttle body, the thing's not gonna wanna idle at all. So you have to make sure that this is milled out correctly to match your, um, your own application. So anyways, we've got the O-ring right there on the intake manifold. Um, it looks to be in good shape. So this smooth part right here is gonna mount onto here. And then we will have a flat gasket like that and then our, th our stock throttle body is going to bolt right on so i'm going to go ahead on and get this part bolted on and then we'll keep going these bolts um, that go on the throttle body adapter with the ict billet kit which ict billet is the one that i would prefer to use um, but they are a five mil And obviously we want to make sure we don't end up with any intake leaks. So we're going to install these bolts loosely and we will hand tight them on in a crisscross cross pattern just to make sure that everything gets fully seated. Obviously you don't want to tighten everything up until all four bolts are in. And the adapter plate is machined to where it will actually self-center using these bolt heads. Don't forget to torque these things. So click, click, click. Click. It's a well calibrated arm right there. So let's talk a little bit about why um, the Fitec and other aftermarket throttle bodies have such an issue idling. Um, so if you look, this is the IAC passage right here. 
So look at the size of that versus this whole thing is the factory one. I mean, if you see the difference and then the same, let me, uh, let me flip it over. All right, so this isn't as drastic, but this is the IAC passage up front. That's the one from GM. So cammed engines need basically almost double the amount of airflow to idle, obviously but with higher RPM and they're less volumetric efficient. Um, so when a factory 53486 liter GM engineered that size passage for an engine that doesn't take a lot of airflow to idle, and this is designed for a you know high performance engine, and it has, I mean, probably half the size of the hole that's what causes the issue. So, I mean, this is a nice looking piece. I mean, it's all billet, everything works good, but this one's gonna drive better. So that brings me to the next point. So obviously everybody's gonna ask about the hole size. So yes, this adapter does neck it down in size. Obviously this is a 78 millimeter throttle body, this is a 92. At this cubic inch, this is a 5.3 with a truck Norse camshaft. This cubic inch does not need this large of a throttle body. Um, if we were to swap these two back to back on the dyno, I mean, you're talking less than five horsepower gain. So I would rather have drivability because that five horsepower that you, that you see in the dyno graph, you can't feel it in a percentage. I mean, that's such a small percentage of power difference. So anyways, guys, just wanted to let you guys see that. Um, this is obviously a junkyard unit. Just pulled this out of the uh, hot tank. Um, this has some, obviously some Chinese sensors, so we're not gonna run those. I'm actually gonna reinstall the factory GM sensors. And this thing's gonna drive like a new truck. All right, so about to install the sensors, but this brings up a good point. So even though this thing externally is nasty, um, when you guys are camming your trucks, pull this like pull the IAC valve out and just lightly clean. This is a plastic uh, seat almost, so there's a valve and seat in there. Clean this up and just try to get all that carbon and gunk off of there, and then clean out your passage in the outdoor control valve. Um, you, you'd be surprised at how much nicer these things drive when there's not a bunch of carbon built up. So anyways, I'm gonna reinstall this. Obviously we've got a good O-ring on it. Um, so I'm gonna knock that out right now. So now we're gonna install the throttle body. So again, make sure your gasket lines up with your machined hole and same on the back side of here. Um, we're going to do the top bolt, obviously, to try to make sure the gasket uh, falls in place. And this is a eight millimeter bolt. Again, don't tighten it up all the way. We want to make sure our gasket lines up uh, and all three bolt holes line up. All right, so hit a little bit of a snag. Looks like this thing, maybe they had to dremel it or something to get it to fit the Phytech. Um, so unfortunately, he'll have to figure out some way of maybe there's a clip that he could add or maybe, I don't know, maybe a zip tie or something. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it tries to stay, but I think this part just wore out or been dremeled on. Anyways, let's finish up the install. How many of y'all just sat there and watched me put those hose clamps on that cold air intake and they didn't match up and they were just kind of showing and thought, damn, I couldn't do that. If, if you thought that, leave me a comment. I couldn't do that either. Y'all should know me by now. I'm too OCD for that shit. All right, yeah, so you can see, I took it back off, flipped those clamps around, got them clocked correctly. Um, I mean, I, I get that we have like a used junkyard throttle body on here and like all this stuff's not perfect, but um, if, if he, like if any of y'all watch LT's channel, which I, he's probably watching this video right now, um, you'll know that he always has the saying of do everything to the best of your ability. I am 100% the same way. So hose clamps are actually clocked as good as I could, I mean, without having to actually like get parts. So anyways, throttle body is installed. I went ahead on and threw a zip tie 
as cleanly as I could on that cable right there. That way it doesn't come off. So anyways, let's, uh, let's get to tuning on this thing. So normally first thing we would do is jump in and pull the reed file. Um, but this, uh, this truck, we actually pulled the reed file on the other day. Um, if you didn't see any of that video, um, I'll go ahead on and link it right here. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to start this thing up. The truck has a check engine light on, check engine light on right now. Um, it was on the other day for the TPS stuff. So first thing we're going to do is check the code, make sure we have no new codes. And as long as we have no new codes, then we are going to check TPS voltage. And as long as TPS voltage is good, then we will start the truck up and go in and data log the truck. So this truck was previously tuned. Um, as I told you guys in yesterday's video, I don't like to have to go back and reinvent the wheel unless I have to. Um, this truck was tuned by a reputable shop. So we're going to dig in and just kind of data log it and see where we're at. So anyways, let's hop in the truck and let's check it out. We're logged into the truck. All right, let's pull the check engine light up. So yeah, we are, um, just throttle pedal position sensor circuit low. So we can go ahead on and clear that and let's record and we're at 0.53 volts which is perfect so right away throttle body fixed it the other day i believe we were at 0.8 i'd have to double check the video but i think we're at 0.8 so anyways um let's go through this tune file and then we'll start the truck up better yet i haven't even gone through the tune i did go ahead on and pull it up I haven't even looked at it yet let's just start this thing up and see how it runs on the old tune up with the new throttle body um yeah, let's just try it just out of curiosity I, I can show you guys we talked about short-term idle trims the other day but let's just check it out really I had the thing on the charger the whole time all right just started the truck back up um obviously it's on a jump box now not sure i mean i got a nice excess power battery charger on there and it was charging the entire time so maybe this uh maybe the battery's not in the greatest shape uh, I'm gonna go ahead on and roll up these windows. Hopefully the sound is better for you guys also. Um, I noticed on my AirPods for some reason, when I was using the microphone on the computer, I heard a little bit of static. So I just did some adjustments in Windows 10. Apparently it's a Windows 10 problem. So yeah, all right, so here's short-term idle trims. You can tell how far off they are in the tune-up because of this. So the truck right now, uh, dynamic airflow is a little bit off nothing crazy so just gonna let this truck run for for a few minutes idle air control counts are pretty decent though we're at 133 degree coolant temp um, and we're already down to 100 counts so this truck's gonna idle just fine with stock throttle body settings so like I didn't touch the set screw or anything like that. This is completely stock settings um, that I have no problems with it idling like that. Um, idle desired RPMs 825. So that's honestly, it's, that's uh, pretty much on the money. So, so far everything looks pretty decent. So I am showing 51.28 pound per hour on the injectors. Um, I need to look back through the text messages and see which injectors this truck has. Um, Cause this realistically should be moving um, because this truck has a Corvette regulator up at the rail. Cause it does have the Trailblazer SS or new body style intake manifold on it. So automatically I'm gonna look at this data log and say that the injector flow rate is set up incorrectly. Um, which could cause dynamic airflow to be off, which could be one of the reasons why idle desired, idle desired airflow and dynamic airflow doesn't match. Um, fuel trims are starting to come in line. So I mean, you could tell that they were doing, they were definitely tuning on the truck to try to make it as best as they could. They just missed a couple of the steps. I guess that's just another shop that needs to be watching my videos. You know, like I'm going to teach y'all everything and I'll teach shop stuff. Like a lot of guys don't know this, but a lot of the, my friends, a lot of my really good friends are other tuners that I teach. Um, you can work together with people. There's plenty of business. Like a lot of guys are asking me why I'm putting all my secrets out online. 
man, I could, I could, we could have two million subscribers on this channel at one point in time, and I could tell you every step by step to tuning every single vehicle. There's still enough business for my competitors just to get work and me to get work, and everybody can actually be friends. So, yeah. Anyways, let's dig through this tune file, and I'm gonna double check what all the truck has done to it, and we're gonna go from there. All right, guys. So just going through this this tune file that was in this truck, and again, this this truck was supposed to have been tuned by a reputable tuner, um, but this is the VE table that was in the truck. So we may have to do. Leave me a comment and see what y'all think about this. I would actually be willing to do like a rate my tune kind of video where y'all can send me one of your tune files from, you know, that's in your vehicle and we could go over it together on video if you want to do that. We could even live stream that, honestly. Um, anyways, this is the V table that I'm pulling out of it. And this will be my V table going into it because again, I've tuned truck Norris trucks. So I'm going through injector data right now. We're, we're retuning this truck. So I'm getting everything set up and then I'll show you guys some more that's in this tune file. All right, so next thing I'm noticing in the tune file, this is the spark tape. Now again, this truck was supposed to have been professionally tuned, so they, they know how to professionally use the smooth button. I mean, this table, you know, it, it doesn't, look, doesn't look terrible until you get to this part. I mean, they got locked out based on 28 degrees of timing in a lifted truck with shorty headers on it. Like, and, and I mean, maybe he was running 93 maybe he wasn't but people this is ridiculous like this isn't tuned this is just uh let me slam this in here and get you out the door kind of set up this is not this is not good so um you know if, if you guys are know somebody that are doing this or maybe you're doing this let's just let's can we not so engines want less timing at peak torque um, they want a little bit more timing before peak torque and they want more timing the higher up the RPM goes. You're not optimizing these vehicles with this kind of timing table, just, just so you're aware. Like, if you keep putting out stuff like this, my trucks are going to beat you. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm going to keep going through this stuff. Alright, still ripping through this tune. Um, I have a 99.53 stock file in the background you'll see the transmission killer has been zeroed out. So spark retard versus torque reduction center, torque management general, you will see they have it zeroed. If y'all wonder why 4L60E gets a bad rap, this is why. Leave torque management in it. I promise you it's not any faster. Like we had this discussion in my burnout video. Um, I mean, honestly, it may come down to me having to get tracked down a truck, stock truck, and do torque management versus no torque management at the drag strip so y'all can understand put this shit back like can you sometimes reduce it sure you can multiply by 0.75 or 0.5 sometimes the torque torque management's there for a reason so please quit taking it out of there if you notice as soon as you take it out of there you start to get a slide shift on the one two just let's leave it please i had to make a shitload of changes to this thing I hate it, but I mean, we're, we're retuning this truck. So anyways, I've kind of gone over basically everything I just did. I've already gone over, over in other videos. So if you need to reference back like V tuning or math tuning or anything like that, other, I've got videos on it. Now I will go more in depth on those, but for today's video, again, I've just kind of showed you throttle by stuff. We'll go through the idle stuff again. Um, and we're going to go over what this truck's capable of on the dyno and we're going to go over trans tuning so it's on my file now um the throttle body or the idle stuff is the only thing i kind of guessed at so let's get this thing started up let me put the jump box back on it's on the battery charger right now for whatever reason apparently this truck needs the jump box all right attempt number two <laughs> May have took, took too much off the auto air control motor. Yeah, put some more back into it. All right, just load a tune file in. I threw four more grams a second on idle airflow. Um, just because obviously I, I've made so many changes, it's unbelievable. Let me let me roll these windows up. This truck's pretty loud, so I have no idea how loud I'm talking. All right, so right away you're going to notice that our injector flow rate is back normal. Um, also, if you remember, 
Um, our dynamic airflow on the other tune was like 12 grams a second. We're down to eight now. Um, and it's actually trying to pull five, five grams a second out. So for whatever reason, I guess I just need a little bit more startup airflow or maybe I just needed to get the IDEC. So sometimes when you do a new idle air control motor, you need to let it go all the way through its cycle and let it get figured out where, where it's at. So anyways, but this is, that was essentially first startup. So, um, again, this truck has shorty headers. I'm used to tuning these things with long tubes. Um, this truck has a Trailblazer SS intake on here. Honestly, uh, the factory intake, the factory 99 to 06 intakes are really good intake. If you've got a truck Norris camshaft, I wouldn't sweat too much about doing this TBSS or in, or, you know, new body style intake. I would just go ahead on and just keep the stock intake manifold. We wouldn't have to do that adapter or any of that stuff. Um, it does have, I think it was a Volant cold air on it. Um, and I just used a MAF curve from a, uh, factory intake tract. So I'll have to do some, some tuning adjustments, but nothing, nothing terribly crazy. So, but as of right now, everything's looking good. You can look at, this is my calculated VE. Um, once I put the wide band in there, we'll actually have VE from, uh, brake specific fuel consumption too. So I always like for these two to end up matching up. That way we know that we're intake wise, we're sealed up. We know we have the correct injector data in it and all that. So I'm just letting the truck warm up right now. There's, we got a little bit of an imbalance on fueling right here. Could be lazy oxygen sensor, could be vacuum leak. Um, could be some injectors that need to be cleaned since the truck sat for a little bit. Um, but yeah, just trying to go over this stuff with you guys so you guys can kind of see what, what I'm looking at. Um, but Truck Norris camshaft, obviously, it pulls really good intake manifold vacuum. Um, but yeah, truck's charging. TPS voltage is good. So this truck's no longer going to set chicken white for the, for the TPS anymore. Um, if you notice idle desired airflow, how this is basically matching what we have up here. So that means all that stuff is set up correctly. So yeah, I'm gonna let the truck warm up and we'll keep the tuning process going. What we're gonna do is today, instead of putting it on the dyno right away, um, I want to go ahead on and make sure the transmission and everything does good and drive around the street. Um, so we need to go and set up shift points. So if y'all haven't already, um, go watch my 6L, or go to my 6L80 video. I'll actually link it right here. Um, and in the description, you'll find where you can download the Blue Cat uh, tool. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and set up the shift points in this truck. Um, and we're going to do it just like we did in the 6L80 video. But if you guys hadn't watched it or you have a 4L60, um, let's just go on and go through this. So as we as this opens up, um, you'll see it's, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show you some tricks. So anyways, this truck has 1800 saw. Um, we have a 373 gear ratio in this truck. Um, we are on a 33 and a half inch tall tire. Um, idle RPM, that's going to be your in gear idle RPM. We're at 775. Lockup config, this is a lifted truck. So I probably won't want it to actually go full lockup until like 1450. So you can just highlight it all and type in 1450. Um, so now we want to do shift RPM. Now this, this truck has a truck Norris camshaft with shorties. We'll probably have the one, two shift at like 6,200 in first. I'm going to have it do a fit 6,100 in second, uh, third and fourth. I mean, 5,200 is completely fine. So what I do is once we've got that done, I go to options and see where this says allow 4L60 to watt, uh, fourth shift. We don't want that. These transmissions, they just can't take it. So, all right. So shift lead time, this thing has shorties. We'll be on the Mustang Dyno. This thing's probably going to make 280-ish on the Dyno with the shorties. So Dyno Jet, we'll call it, we'll just, we'll call it 310. Um, we'll say this truck is 5,800 pounds. Made six extended cabs, lift, got heavy wheels and tires. Um, so that should have that. What changed? So that'll have that. And then on shift slope, even though this is a drive-by cable truck, I actually still run the 04 up settings that we did on the 6L80. So go 04 up and then downshift, just set it to 10. And there's your Blue Cat tool. That's this right here. Um, truck should shift great. 
and so I'm gonna load in these settings and we'll go from there so this one we can actually click export and go to export window I'm gonna minimize it so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to under speedo and you want to make sure your calibration is correct so we got VSS pulses per mile at 89 823 that's where we're at um, trans ref per mile I got 22.45 and so it's a little off so I'll copy here and we're gonna paste it here um, all right so the rest of that looks good so we'll go to trans shift scheduling um, we're gonna copy this table and we're gonna load this into um, if you didn't see it's trans shift scheduling part throttle shift normal we're gonna load this into here and then we're gonna also load this into the cruise side I've never found where this cruise table when it's active, um, but I just do it just just because. So, anyways, click next. We're going to watch shift. Uh, so we're going to copy that table, and we're going to put it into here. Um, under full throttle shift RPM, let's do. And now again, I put this truck back to stock on the trans. So 6,100 and then we'll just, actually I'll make this 8,192 because it's never gonna make a watch shift. Um, so this will pop up and say, would you like to override? No. And so that part's done. All right, so these other settings I showed you in the Gen 3 burnout video. Uh, but anyways, let's go back. So two one down, um, we'll make this 48. Uh, D1 urban. We'll make this one two shift right here two five six um this down right here we'll have it at 48. um we're gonna do upshift d2 so if you look we got six spots over so I, I again i say uniform so i copy six spots over copy it paste it downshift it will be the same thing but it'll be four um so i'll do the same thing on it i'll copy the four paste it uh, upshift second or upshift to third this these both should be disabled and they are um, torque converter we're going to go first off this thing has an aftermarket torque converter in it um, so we went under torque converter in the general TCC duty cycle I do this on all um, aftermarket torque converters I'll make this maximum 100 and we on a most now you'll have to try this in your own application sometimes it's too aggressive but on most torque converters they oh, they don't have a clutch material that allow or that likes the PWM um, so in order to eliminate PWM we're gonna click minimum and we're gonna type in 90 now if this thing is like neck snapping when it goes into lockup you can bring it down some you can do this based off of feel um, anyways apply and release we're gonna go back over on blue cat and we're gonna copy this TCC table and we're gonna paste this into our uh, speed normal and our cruise and that is our train settings so I'm gonna load this in and let's go to load let's go drive the truck all right let's go to it for a test drive had to bring the jump box with us um, even though I had this thing on the battery charger it's got a, what looks like a brand new battery it says uh, 3 of 23 but either something's killed it or maybe it has a wiring problem going down to the starter um anyways let's go on and drive this thing turns like a school bus Test AC in this thing yet. We're going to see if it works good or not. I'm going to assume it's a big negative, but maybe. This body style truck always has some of the best AC, usually. I honestly think we're going to be able to give this customer a good product. If that's the case and the truck can leave and he's out minimal amount of money. I think he's gonna be tickled to death. Even, even though, I mean, he's been without his truck running correctly for a very long time. Um, I think it's gonna be a big deal to him for his, him to actually be able to jump in his truck and drive it and shift and idle and do all the stuff it's supposed to do. So far, it feels good though. Okay, 
AC is working. I think, yeah, it is. Just gonna the blower motor adjust it right. All right, so if you're watching the log, you'll see that I'm a little bit off on short-term idle trims in gear. Um, that's not a problem at all. It's just, that's just, I just kind of guessed at it. So if you notice that as we drive it, it's actually holding those settings. So that's one of the reasons why we want these things to be, be accurate. I mean, we're cruising right on along. Actually, I mean, we're pretty close on fuel trims. Um, but again, I'll show you in a video, but you can watch how we're actually calculating our VE table. Right now, we're populating a VE table. Now, again, I've already done, I don't know how many versions of truck Norris. So I know this VE table that I've, I've got in the truck is gonna be very close, but I can actually compare it off of this. So I will, I'll do a video on this to help you guys out. Um, Cause it really is, I really want y'all to have a completely tuned product. So many of these just these uh, fly by night tuners or some of these tuning schools, they just teach you just tune math only. And it's just, it's not all the way right. We like, but again, y'all are probably not as OCD as me, so maybe you don't care. I mean, math only, they'll drive just fine. It's just, it's always best to give your AC all the information you can to make sure it understands how to properly, you know, function with the aftermarket parts that you've installed. Like we want these vehicles to run clean, drive clean, you know, get good fuel mileage, have good power, and just be basically as close to reliable as factory. All right, so we're chilling in the truck right now. Um, just a little short test drive, and I wanted to um, go over with you guys some of the other settings for a 4L60. Um, so first thing we're going to do is go to shift general um, under force motor current RPM transmission actually calls this the line of death um, When you click positive see how this is super high um, if, 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 a, if a tuning shop tries to command over 96 uh, PSI It will hit this line of death as they call it and it'll dump all line pressure So first thing you want to do is highlight 96 row copy and paste it over to your 100 row uh, and you're going to want to do the same thing with the negative. So you're going to copy 96, paste it in 100, and that will allow the truck to hold line pressure. Um, if you want to start off with some basic line pressure adjustments, um, a lot of times what I'll tell the guys to do is go under shift pressure, upshift, and performance. That is your tow haul um, line pressure. So if you copy it, you can paste it into your normal. And it, it should firm up shifts quite a bit. You can do the same thing with your shift timing. So you go to shift timing, um, desired shift time, go to performance. And actually this truck, for whatever reason, has actually has this table filled out. Um, normally the performance is gonna be 0.3 or 300 milliseconds. So we're gonna make our shift time 300 milliseconds. So I'm gonna load this in to the truck real quick and we're gonna go drive again. I start it quick and hope for the best. I mean, nothing. Hopefully, it starts, or I may have to go get a ride. So, I'll pause the video and I'll come back once the truck starts, hopefully. Hey, truck's running. Anyways, let's go for a drive in this thing again. Like I said, um, I did those adjustments to the trans. I try to keep everything as OE as possible. So again, if GM says that that um, line pressure and that shift time is good for a factory truck in tow haul mode, then that means it's going to be just fine for our truck like it is right now. So now we still, I'm not saying we won't have to do further tuning on the trans, um, but right now the trans shifts good. It feels good. I mean, it's doing everything it's supposed to do, honestly. So... But this truck's definitely going to need a battery or something. Luckily, it's, I'm sure it's going to be under warranty. Um, it just looks like an O'Reilly's like super start battery. And those batteries are usually pretty good, but I'm assuming it's just been killed one too many times. So the truck is charging. You can see control module voltage. I mean, we, it's not charging the highest by any means, but I'm also running 
the air conditioner right now too. So the air conditioner, this truck actually has electric fans. Um, so for all that stuff to be on here, I mean, 13 volts is, is fine. It's not the greatest, but it's fine. 13.2. So. Trans seems to be shifting pretty good. I mean, fuel trims, I'm just, we're close on those already. This truck's not gonna take long at all on the dyno. Definitely not the most powerful truck I've ever driven, that's for sure. This truck really needs a gear. So just like I was talking about in the 6L80 video that was a 33 and a half, that's what these tires end up working out to also on the GPS. So we're talking a 34 inch diameter tire um, on a truck with a 4L60 and a 373 gear. It needs like a 456, honestly, or even a 488. This truck would run good with a 488. So far, everything's, I mean, this truck drives just fine. Yeah, I think we're gonna be able to finish this truck today, which is, that's pretty good considering, um, you know, the issues this customer's had. I mean, it literally drives 100% fine. I think it's probably gonna make a little bit less than 280, honestly, but I don't know. Let's, uh, I'm pulling back to the shop now. I mean, it passed a little test drive. The transmission feels good. Um, it's really not going to need much more tuning because, like I said, obviously this is a combination I tune very, very, very often. So let's get this thing backed in on the dyno, get it strapped down, and we'll go on and we'll go and let her eat. So let's go into this thing and check it out. Front tires, obviously not the greatest, but they have tread, um, which obviously the front end stuff doesn't matter as much. Um, that's just more so for me driving it around on the street. Um, but anyways, you'll see we've got uh, shorties up there. Um, the factory Kelly converters are in place. Um, Thing, let's say it's clearing okay so it, it is true dual straight pipe so it gets a little bit close to the drive shaft but nothing crazy drive shafts tight uh transfer case output shaft seal is leaking looks like transfer case may be leaking in a couple spots but shouldn't affect us at all um rear u joint actually looks like it's been replaced straps look okay rear tires are shop but they'll be fine on the dyno so anyway so that's the stuff i look at so let's get this wide band in here and get to work some of y'all may be wondering where i'm going to do the wide band at on this particular truck it still has the factory front half of the exhaust well as you can see see that wide or that o2 sensor right there the post cat oxygen sensor that's what we're going to take out so y'all may be wondering, well, hey, if he's taking out the uh, post cat sensor, is that gonna alter readings? Well, unless there's a way for the chemical process of catalytic converters to add enough oxygen to cause the truck to be crazy lean, no, it's not gonna really change anything because I'm gonna actually have some extra fuel in this thing anyways because Obviously, it's a lifted truck. If he wants to tow with it or if he wants to run lesser octane or whatever he wants to do, we're going to have plenty of fuel in this thing anyways. I just want to make sure we're as close to command it as possible. So would it, would it be better all the way up there at the, at the cylinder head? Absolutely. But in any application, even your long tubes, you'd still be better getting as close to the valve as possible. So we're working with what we can. Uh, this is not going to cause any issues. Hell, a lot of tuners you may even see, they'll actually just put a sniffer in the tailpipe way in the back. So I just try to get up as close as I can. So anyways, let's, uh, I gotta grab a glove, but let's get this thing out. And 
obviously that sensor is going to go back installed once I'm done tuning. Um, and in case you guys are, are thinking like, you know, what's he talking about? Like, you know, the catalytic converter is going to scrub hydrocarbons and the fuel. And if you're thinking that, then I'll say you're correct. But you also have to remember that these are called oxygen sensors. They are not fuel sensors. So they are only looking for oxygen content. And that is actually the reason why we can run, uh, say, E85 or methanol with oxygen sensors. Because again, they don't care about anything but the oxygen content itself. So if that confuses some of y'all, just leave me a comment and I can make a video on oxygen sensors and why they act the way they do. So I know stoic of fuel, like, you know, a lot of guys, the E10 stuff, think that they're, um, think that their wideband should read 1410 at uh, idle and they just don't they still read 147 no matter what you do and it's 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 literally just it's just the way that these numbers lay out and that's also the reason why I work in lambda because lambda just makes so much more sense so let me grab another wrench also I just noticed this truck has the factory or what looks appears to be a factory fuel filter on it, so that uh that'll need to be addressed. See that looks pretty original. So if it's been changed, it's been a long time. Alright, hopefully this will start now. And like I said, the battery's fairly new and it's actually a nice battery. Alive. Damn it. Forgot to hook up the air brake on the dyno. Alright, air brake is now, now it has air pressure. So let's back this thing up now. Hopefully that jump box don't fall. Pretty sure you already know exactly what I'm gonna say, but just in case you're new here, actually we'll use these. Um, four straps in the back on the dyno. Two going front to back, two going as an X pattern. Le tighten up the front to back ones. You leave the X loose. You disable your uh, air brake on your dyno. You put the truck in drive. You let it roll to self-center. And that is how you properly strap a vehicle to the dyno. All right, now we wash our hands and get in the truck. All right, so we're up on the dyno now. Um, Dino is in vehicle simulation mode. Front fans are on, exhaust fan is on. Um, we're gonna go ahead on and do a loaded, we'll do a loaded second gear pull. Just wanna make sure the MAF curve is in a good spot. All right, converter is locked. If y'all saw that, sometimes when you go to lock the converter, you make sure you have to click it off instead of on. That is completely normal. All right, so truck is good temperature. Everything looks good. Still a little partial rip. Showing a little bit of knock, showing a lot of bit of knock. So we'll pull out of it. Now, one thing I didn't show y'all, it was off camera is they had the knock sensors way desensitized, like too far desensitized. So some of this knock could actually be true. Um, we don't know what fuel this thing is on. I can check the message real quick. It does obviously have uh, shorty headers, but with catalytic converters um, that are original to the truck with 268,000 miles on it. So they could be partially clogged. Um, again, the, Octane wise, we may not have the greatest octane. 
So let me uh, let me get this truck shut off, and we'll go through the data. All right, so the truck shut off. Um, looking through the data right now, wideband was really close. Let me pull up EQ error versus math. So I mean, we were within. I mean, one two percent. So pulling down to 13 degrees. I mean, I feel like that's excessive. So we, we could have a false knock condition here. Um, but for right now, I'm not going to concern myself with it. We can verify it on the dyno itself, like we're doing a power pool. So let me get this fuel squared away and we'll start doing power pools and then we'll check the uh, knock condition to see if it's false or not. All right guys, so truck's fired back up. I added a touch of fuel to it. Um, I also messaged the owner of the truck to see what octane of fuel is in the truck, just to make sure we're not tuning for like some mom and pop shop 87, which is possible. 13 degrees is still excessive though. Um, this truck should be able to tolerate a little bit more than that, even though it's lifted with cats and everything, so it should still tolerate more than that. Um, so we're gonna do a little power pull. Um, I put the uh, my camera back at the tailpipe. Um, so we're gonna watch for puffs. Um, when it actually does activate the knock sensors. So let's get up into second gear. And lock the converter up. And I'm gonna get the rear camera going. Still rip. Dino is stopping. Uh, let's get it slowed back down. All right, so we still had showing the knock, but it's not as bad as what it was showing. So let's get out and see what this thing made for power. All right, so, oh yeah, we're down on power for sure. Uh, 231 horsepower, 240 foot pounds of torque. Now we obviously know this thing has the big wheels and tires on it, but I would, like this truck um, really should be in like that 270, 280 range. So it could be some in the timing. Um, so I'm gonna go back and check this video and see where we're at timing wise. Um, but if this thing stays down, consistently down on power, I'd say honestly, it probably needs a, the, the catalytic converters probably need to be replaced. So anyways, let's check this uh, video and run through the data and we'll do another pull. Y'all probably saw it in the video, the dyno pool, and I just saw it for myself. Um, this thing is, it looks like it's detonating. So knock sensors are pulling the timing out of it. Um, so again, I've added fuel, we're, we're 83 Lambda. Um, if y'all need to know what it is, again, go to tools, calculator, um, just do 14.7 times 0.83. So I'm commanding 12 two air fuel. So we should have four, plenty of fuel um, the truck is, if you look at timing, uh, when it does uh, ping, uh, which again, I keep the hot tan, low octane tables active. So this truck can adjust its own timing table. So if it gets better fuel, it'll turn itself up. Um, but when it pings, it pulls us down to 15 and a half, 14, cruise 14. And as RPM comes up, um, the truck starts to, yeah, the truck comes up to 18 and a half degrees. So if y'all remember, in the um, original tune file, they had this thing at 28 degrees of timing and we're pinging with 10 degrees less than it. That's why we check these things. So anyways, I know this uh, tune up that's in it, um, the high octane, low octane table are gonna be pretty close, close to calibrated. I'll go in and show you guys so you can kind of see where we're at. So if you look at uh, cylinder uh, air mass, 0.77, Pulling back to 0.72. Um, so if we look at my high octane table, um, right before peak torque, we're like 24 degrees, pulls back to 22, down to 21, and then back up to 25. That's my high octane table. Um, low octane table, um, well, let's pull back up 76. So low octane table can get down 18 degrees. 
uh, 15.3 in the mid range and 18 up top. So it pretty much was riding my low octane table and actually still ping. Um, so what we're going to do is if it stays on that. I mean, I've got to allow the truck to be able to pull it out. I mean, this truck honestly should be fine. It could just be this fuel is really old. So, because obviously, I mean, air, air fuel wise, we're, I mean, we're, we're pretty much dead nuts on. So, hmm. and I mean, even the math is showing a, a decent frequency. I mean, realistically, when, if you're making decent power out of a 5.3, you get over 10,000 hertz. It's pretty solid. Yeah, instead of making a tune up change, um, what I'll have him do. Well, actually, that'll be our one and only, only power pull on this truck. Um, again, this truck has sat for a while and it's had some issues. Let's let him run this fuel out of it and put some fresh fuel. He can just run fresh 87 if he wants. Just make sure it's got some fresh fuel in it. Um, but it may be those those uh, converters are starting to clog up a little bit. So I don't really want to get too aggressive on a tune-up change because I know this tune-up has been good in basically every freaking... You know, truck Norris 5.3 truck I've ever tuned. Because um, I've actually built these tables off of, you know, well, I mean, I guess I hadn't, I probably haven't done, I guess I probably have done 100 truck Norris cams in this bike style truck. May, I may have not have done that many yet, but I'm, I'll be in the ballpark. But again, this is years of tuning, so I've developed these tune ups to where they're all pretty, they should be pretty spot on. I mean, y'all see how close my map curve was right off the rip. When, like Y'all watched me put the wide band in there, so I was within one or two percent just right off the bat. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let, let this thing go as is. I'm gonna explain to him what all happened, which actually he'll probably be able to watch the video. Um, but yeah, keep in mind, guys, we're we're ten degrees less time. Let's see if they even had a low octane table. Um, let's go to open compare. The previously tuned. Yeah, so y'all saw obviously saw the high octane table. Low octane table was locked out. So this thing's been riding not since Resina its entire life. It honestly may need a fresh set of plugs. Um, it may We may have a bunch of piston material on top of the plugs. So either way, truck runs and drives good. We're going to call it there, guys. Um, so I'm going to get this thing pulled off the dyno. We'll do a final test drive. And yeah, that, that's where that's. Yeah, so I'm going to get this thing off the dyno right now. Got on our final street drive, and I can kind of explain to y'all where I'm where I'm at on this thing. So, you know, a lot of you guys are gonna be like, "Man, 231 horsepower, like, that ain't shit." Well, I mean, first off, you're right, it ain't shit. Um, this truck should be should have been able to tolerate at least in the upper teens for timing. So, we definitely have something going on now. You know, I know a lot of you guys are like, man, I've watched all these videos and pretty much every vehicle's got a problem. Well, I mean, that's it's pretty much how it goes, but it's not a huge deal. So this truck, uh, we don't know, I don't know age of plugs. You know, it could have some five heat range plugs in here. And obviously y'all saw where the previous tuner had it locked out at 28 degrees. And, I, and the part I didn't show you is they had the knock sensors like way desensitized. So there's a good chance this truck has been seeing, you know, 20 plus degrees of timing maybe even as much as 28 because uh, yeah that's right because yeah knock sensors could have pulled eight so yeah it would have been i mean we're talking you know 20 degrees on a truck that was pinging you know well below that so i'm going to recommend he throws in a good set of tr6 plugs um the old plugs are probably going to have some piston material on there hopefully it hadn't hurt anything um and him just to get some better fuel more than likely the catalytic converters are probably about clogged so he's probably going to really need to re replace them because like I said, this truck has 268,000 miles let's go the other way uh truck has 268,000 miles and it has the original cats under the truck 
So y'all know as well as I do that these cats, there's a good chance they're clogged. And obviously if you have stuffed up exhaust on a, on a cammed LS, it pisses them off. They don't, they won't tolerate timing. They won't make any power. Um, but either way, I mean, as y'all look at the data log, tune up is good. Um, I actually ended up put, uh, pulling another couple degrees off of the octane table just to make sure that the truck could actually completely eliminate not on this fuel that's in the truck. Cause the truck's showing a full tank of fuel. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it's showing a full tank of fuel. So I do want the truck to be able to adjust itself and get, get below its threshold to actually stop the knock. Um, obviously it's not knocking right now. So, but 231 horsepower, that is in fact low for this bike style truck on the dyno. Now, even though, yes, it has 24s and 35s, I still feel like it should have been, I mean, at least 260, probably more like, like I said, like probably 275 or 280 though. Cause again, this, this truck has shorty headers and it has the factory cats on there. If it had set of long tubes on here, I mean, it, it'd make way more than that. Like if it was long tubes, it could actually tolerate the hot thing, uh, timing table that I have. I mean, like they, they'll usually make like 310 to 315 on that dyno. Um, so you're talking another 85 horsepower and it's easily possible. He can easily achieve that. So I just want you guys to understand that like, just because we ran into an issue today on this one and it's just a little bit down on power, the truck will automatically adjust itself. So if you haven't watched my video about the motor mount taking away 80 horsepower, I'm going to link it right here. Um, and, and I go through and I explain hot tank and low octane tables. So this truck is obviously going to be down on low octane table right now. But if he gets the issue fixed where the truck's not detonating anymore, the truck's not picking up any knock, it will learn itself back up to the hot tank table and it will turn itself back up. It won't need a single tune change. This truck could honestly pick up 75 or 80 horsepower. If he just threw instead of long tubes and some good fuel in this thing, no tune changes whatsoever. The truck will pick up another 75 or 80 horsepower. So I hope you guys understand that. Um, but otherwise, like I said, we're driving the truck right now. I'm just gonna bust a quick block because obviously we didn't make any type of crazy adjustments. He's definitely gonna have to replace the battery. So one thing that y'all may or may not know, but on a drive-by cable vehicle, they will do what they call an IAC position reset. Um, so if you, you know, if the battery goes flat or the voltage gets too low, it will reset the IAC. So it may like the outer control valve. So it may not start right like good on the first hit. Once you get a good battery in there, it'll save its memory and it'll understand where it's at in IAC position and the truck will start to start really good. So this thing has still been starting decent. It only started kind of shitty when I went to pull it off the dyno and that's because this jump box is, it's basically done. I mean, the truck's lived on the jump box all day. Because again, as y'all can see, when the truck's running, we got 13 point, well, 12.9 to 13.2 control, control module voltage. So that means the voltage of the battery is going to be even higher than that. So not a big deal. Probably just needs to take this battery over to O'Reilly's to get it warranted. Um, so overall, I mean, this is actually a good day on this truck. I'm actually really impressed um, because considering the issues that he's had and how long he hasn't, he, it's been since he's been able to drive this truck, um, for us just to be able to turn it around that quick in one day and it drive as good as it does, it shifts good. I mean, the truck literally feels good. I mean, the tires need to be driven some, you can tell they're flat spotted, but I don't know. Let's get back to the shop though. So I hope you guys liked my video. Um, this 99 Silverado with Truck Norse Cam may not have impressed y'all on power, but it actually, I mean, it's a good driving truck. So the customer's gonna be happy with it, I hope. Um, my content obviously is gonna change every single day. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Like tomorrow, I've got two um, Gen 4 E67 ECU um, LS3 C10s. One's a square body, one's a 67 to 72. So we'll put both those on the dyno and do this video on both of them same day. Like it'll be one video with both trucks. So I'm also gonna bring in more action. We're gonna go do some drag strip tuning. I will show you guys what my life is like when it comes to traveling and spending time with my other YouTuber buddies. So we're going to build this up. I want to have a relationship with you guys. I want y'all to understand what my life is like. Um, so thanks again for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. Um, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'm going home.